All right, so thank you to everyone who has stayed with us all day. Um, we are on our last presentation of the day. We have T Brown, who is another NCC alumni. He is also works in the Office of Communications and Marketing as a photographer and multimedia specialist. So he is gonna share some photography tips with you all. And um, then we will pop him back in if we have time to answer any questions that you might have. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um, so that you can all check out his pre-recorded session. What's good, Eagles? My name is Chi Brown, and I work for North Carolina Central University as the campus photographer and multimedia specialist in the Office of Communications and Marketing. It's a lot of words. I basically take photos and coordinate much of the visual marketing that you see around campus. I got into photography about 14 years ago while selling electronics on eBay. Uh, I had become a power seller and wanted to separate myself from competing stores. So I decided to learn a bit about photography to set my listings apart from the others. I felt that having amazing photos of my products would help my listings to get more attention compared to the competition. So I studied lighting and competition in an effort to make that happen. Eventually, a few of my friends wanted me to take their photos. Sorry guys, I realized I needed to share my screen first. What's good Eagles? My name is Chi Brown and I work for North Carolina Central University as the campus photographer and multimedia specialist in the Office of Communications and Marketing. It's a lot of words. I basically take photos and coordinate much of the visual marketing that you see around campus. I got into photography about 14 years ago while selling electronics on eBay. Uh, I had become a power seller and wanted to separate myself from competing stores. So I decided to learn a bit about photography to set my listings apart from the others. I felt that having amazing photos of my products would help my listings to get more attention compared to competition. So I studied lighting and competition in an effort to make that happen. Eventually, a photos as well. A business group from there, still later, I became the editor of the NCCU student newspaper, the Campus Echo. I made a decent supplemental income until I graduated. And from there, my alma mater called me back to campus about a year later and asked me to help with photographing events and the rest, as they say, is history. So now I'm here in the Office of Communications and Marketing and working as the eyes of the North Carolina Central University Eagles. As a visual storyteller who is tasked to tell the story of the university, I'm often seeking opportunities to teach others to assist in telling our campus story. I certainly can't be everywhere at all times. And now with COVID, it makes it even more difficult to tell these stories alone. So I thought this would be a wonderful opportunity to simply talk briefly about how you can control light and capture great images that help tell the story of the university visually. Now, if you'd like to learn more than what will be provided in this short video, you can always seek me out on the university directory. I'm always open to help students learn to use their cameras and build their photographic skill set. Learning to capture and control your light is what separates the top photographers from all the rest. The word photography actually means drawing with light. The camera is the first tool you'll have to help in controlling that light. I often see student photographers who are learning to produce images themselves, and they sometimes miss opportunities to learn all the tools that are provided to them inside their cameras. So my first lesson to most students is to teach them to shoot in full manual mode, no automatic modes for controlling your light. Take a week or so and force yourself to shoot with your camera in full manual mode. 
This is the first step to mastering your ability to control the light. Think of it like this. It's almost like driving a car. If you learn to drive a manual stick shift, you can basically drive any car. Same goes for cameras. Learn to shoot in manual mode and you can use any camera and get the control that you would need to get for good exposures and to make great photos. I shoot in manual mode probably about 98% of the time because I like to have full control of my images. In order to take advantage of using manual mode, you have to know the three main controls every camera should provide you in order to control the light. Those three controls are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. We'll start with talking a little about aperture. Aperture works like the iris of an eye. When there is less light, the iris of the camera needs to open to let more light pass through and record onto the sensor. The sensor is a part of the camera that has taken the place of film. Many of you probably don't recall film cameras, but film recorded the light prior to the advent of the sensor. So the aperture opens wider to let in more light and it gets smaller to let in just a little bit of light when the situation is a bit brighter. Aperture, of course, helps you to control the light, but several other things are also controlled when you deal with aperture. The main thing being the depth of field, which can be summed up as the amount of things that are blurred in the background and the foreground compared to your subject or your focus point. So if you're looking here at this picture, me in this frame here, you'll notice that behind me, the if I have everything done right, like I, I'm, I'm controlling the camera, so I'm not sure, but um, behind me, these monitors should be slightly blurred. They're not in good focus. I should be in good focus or decent focus. Um, and anything in the foreground, say my hands now, are probably going to be a little bit out of focus where they are compared to my face, right? So this this is because the aperture on the camera in front of me is um, a shallow, it gives a shallow depth, depth of field. That means it's wider. You have a wide aperture. I think the, the aperture is probably about a 2.8 now, um, which is pretty wide. The lower the number, the wider the aperture. And then the cameras can get, now they get to about, you know, what is it, uh, 0 0.095. So, you know, most of them are, are going to be around 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.8. Those are going to be the wider ones that you can get in prime lenses. In zoom lenses, 2.8 is pretty much the lowest you're going to get. All right. So this phenomenon of the background blur is often referred to as bokeh. So if you're focusing on a person, the aperture is what you would use to create those blurry backgrounds. Bokeh is the element of photos that everyone loves and the cell phone companies try to reproduce with filters and fancy app options that allow you to digitally blur the backgrounds. Now, doing these things in your camera instead of your iPhone will render much better looking photos, I promise you. Um, getting those blurry backgrounds and foregrounds can be tricky depending on the lens options that you have. You normally want a lens with a wide aperture. Now, Often cameras come in kits and those kit lenses that come with cameras don't have much of a wide aperture. But sometimes you can zoom way in to accentuate the blur that you do have by opening the aperture up as wide as you can. A lot of times on the longer end of a kit lens, it's about uh, f5.6. Um, if I remember correctly, I haven't had a kit lens in so long. Um, so you, you open it up as long as you can and then you open up the aperture as wide as you can, right? So those longer lenses tend to amplify the blur effect or bokeh effect. Uh, a better option I would, I would suggest would be to purchase a cheap 50 millimeter prime lens or 85 millimeter prime lens with a wide aperture. Prime, lens, prime lenses, again, are fixed focal lengths. So they, don't, they don't zoom in or zoom out. And because of that, they're, they tend to be cheaper, but they also tend to have wider apertures, which means that you can um, get something that's about f1.4, which is really wide, really good and dark. Um, and that lens um, 
it's not going to you know break the bank these lenses are great at getting you that bokeh look without costing you an entire refund check um there's a chinese version of a 50 millimeter lens for canon and nikon cameras on amazon that costs around 50 bucks next we'll quickly discuss shutter speed now shutter speed also helps us to control the light but instead of using a wider or smaller size to allow a certain amount of light to reach the sensor, the shutter speed uses time to control how much light is recorded onto that sensor. So just like the widest aperture allows more light to brighten an exposure, a longer time or a shutter speed allows the light to brighten an exposure as well. And also like aperture, there's a sort of blur that can be given with shutter speeds. A shutter speed blur isn't as often desired compared to the bokeh that aperture can give you. Still, you can create some creative images using blur that shutter speed provides, but uh, this motion blur rather than focus blur. And, and, and there is a, there's a big difference. Uh, you have to be careful with slower shutter speeds. They, they can ruin photos pretty easily in darker conditions. The basic rule is that the quicker shutter speeds will get you sharper images. You see a lot of photographers when they're first coming, uh, when they first get their first camera right, and they'll 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 pop it out in a room just like this room, right? Now I have lights here and and behind me, um, so so I would probably wouldn't have this problem. But with the, just the regular practical lights that you have, the 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 bulbs that you buy at you know Walmart or something like that, you. Your eyes perceive it as bright, but the camera knows differently. And it's much brighter outdoors. This is why a lot of people, when they take photos outside, even on your cell phone, the cell phone does the same thing. And so um, so cell phones use shutter speed. They use um, um, aperture. They use ISO. They, they all have these, these features. But that's why you might notice if you're taking photos outdoors, and the photos always look more crisp, clear, Every, all the colors look great. When you bring it indoors, the colors are kind of washed. Um, your focus might not be as good. It might be as, not be as sharp. And that's because light is usually dimmer inside. So when people come, come with new cameras, they buy a new camera and they think, oh, this is great. I just got this Canon. It's a DSLR. It's a, it's a, it cost me, you know, a thousand bucks, 500 bucks, however much. And uh, it ought to be able to take great pictures straight from the door. You bring it home start taking pictures and all your pictures are blurry and you can't figure out why. Well, first of all, it's on automatic. You don't have it on manual. <laughs> and the, the computer in the camera is basically setting it for a slower shutter speed to compensate for the fact that there's not enough light. And with a slow shutter speed, you're, you're going to see motion blur. And the motion blur may not be from your subject. You can be taking a picture of a statue in your house and you'll still see the most motion blur. And the, the, the reason why is because your hands move ever so much. And what shutter speed is, does is it opens and closes in a certain amount of time. And then if during that time that it's open, you move at all, it's going to capture that onto the sensor. So the thing to do is to have a faster shutter speed so it doesn't capture the actual movement of your hand. And believe it or not, you might think you're pretty steady, but your hands are going to move a little bit when you push that button. It's just, it's just human nature. You can't stand perfectly still. You have to breathe. Uh, you're made out of water mainly, so you're, you're not able to stay perfectly still, and the camera will see that. So you have to use a faster shutter speed to circumvent that problem. So for example, for sports, I normally don't shoot anything slower than one five hundredth of a second. That's pretty fast. You want to be able to stop the motion of the athletes and not have the motion blur in your photos. The last control is the ISO. I like to think of ISO like the volume control on a very sensitive audio device like a stereo. Imagine having a car stereo with dry rotted speakers, like in an older car or truck. They sound okay when it's turned down low, but if you turn it up too loud, it distorts the music tremendously. Now ISO works similarly in that it lower, at lower numbers, 
your photos will be pristine in terms of image quality instead of sound quality now. now but if you boost the ISO, you're going to subject your images to more digital noise or distortion, just like those dry rotted speakers. Now this will, on a photo, this will be like graininess that you'll be introducing into your images if the ISO is raised too high, right? So for this reason, ISO is the last thing that I like to use to get good exposures. I tend to like clean images. I don't like all that grain in my photos. But when shooting in areas that have low light, like the B and Duke Auditorium, you have no choice other than to bring a flash or deal with that graininess. Now, I don't bring flashes into the B and Duke Auditorium or into um, any of our venues when we're having uh, on stage performances or uh, speakers. And the reason being is that speakers, um, they're up there in the light and everything else is dark down there. When you're looking into the darkness, you don't want flashes popping into your face because it, 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 it basically renders you blind to everything that's in front of you. So you don't want to uh, flash people on stage. So for that reason, you have to learn how to control um, you know, your aperture, your shutter speed, and last but not least, the ISO. Um, low light photography often requires that you introduce a lot of digital noise into your images because you got to shoot at high ISOs in, in a lot of circumstances like at the BN Duke. Um, thankfully, the more up-to-date cameras have less digital, digital noise. So if you have a newer camera, you should be able to crank up your ISO quite a bit before the digital noise becomes visible in your images. Remember, this will all depend on your camera. And of course, the more expensive cameras will usually get you the best results. That's most of the time. These three controls are just the beginning as you learn to navigate through the world of controlling light and photography. If you're interested in learning more, find me on the campus directory and send me an email. The campus can always use more visual perspectives as we continue to document the institution through the eyes of eagles. I'm Shee Brown, and you all continue to keep soaring. Awesome. Well, I learned a lot about photography in that short tutorial. Um, I hope that everyone else did as well. Um, I know that Chi had to head out, um, so he did send over his email, which I dropped in Facebook Live. I'll also drop in the chat here. Um, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to um, reach out to him. That concludes our conference this year. Um, Thank you all uh, who stayed tuned. I hope that you all gathered as much information as I did and use the resources and the connections that have been given to you to network and get ready to soar. Um, thank you so much to our presenting sponsor, GNS Business Communications. Uh, we're incredibly grateful for all the support that you've given us. Um, students, I would definitely encourage you all to research this agency here um, in Raleigh. They do have some additional offices across the nation and overseas as well. Um, so definitely reach out to them, learn about the different opportunities that they offer. They have some great internship and job opportunities coming up. Um, and you'll definitely hear from them later this semester as they've partnered with us on some additional programming. So thank you all so much again. I hope that everyone has an amazing afternoon and Eagle Pride Amplified.